On July 4, 1776, the Continental Congress declared that they were no longer subjects of the monarch of Great Britain, King George III. They were taking a stand against him that they might enjoy the inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and we celebrate that as a nation. We have in Christ the promise of something even better, if you can imagine that, eternal life, liberty to live God's way, and yes, a happy life. The happiness that God promises is more than the contentment felt whenever your needs and your wants are met, although that's a pretty good feeling. It is even more than the satisfaction that gets felt whenever we have a job that's well done and we're pretty proud of ourselves. Happiness is even more than the joyful experience that comes when we're able to use our gifts and our talents that God has given us in the way he intended, and he gets the glory, which brings a great feeling. The Greek term for the best kind of happiness is makarios. It meant to be above the normal cares and problems and worries that weigh down most people in this life. It was often used to describe the rich back in Jesus' day because they were above the struggles that everyone else had to try to get through each day. But Jesus, in his Sermon on the Mount, defined it as the good that God will bring about in his children's lives, which is most often in English translated as a blessing. That's why he said, blessed are, we might say happy are. Those following Jesus don't always look happy because they're going through some difficult times and they're going through it God's way. They mourn, they humble themselves, they're persecuted, and God promises to bring something good into their lives, and that's going to bring a happiness that can't be compared to any other, especially as we go through those difficult times in our life, and it makes us truly happy. But we sometimes give up on God's promise to bring about that happiness. And so we get enticed to pursue our own happiness by our own devices. And that always leads back to the slavery of sin. At a Passover meal, which celebrated God's deliverance of Egypt from the slavery in Egypt, Jesus taught his disciples to use the bread and the cup from that meal to remember that God was delivering them from the slavery to sin through Jesus, through his bread that we break and through the cup that we take, we remember that Jesus is the one who has set us free and that we do enjoy that eternal life, that liberty to live for God and that we get a truly happy life. Would you join me in prayer? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus, for the sacrifice that he has made for us. And yes, Lord, we need it. We confess to you our sin and our need for your forgiveness. Lord, we want to be set free that we might enjoy all of your blessings. Jesus, it's in your name that we pray. Amen.